All right. Are you guys thumbs up if you are seeing my PowerPoint? The joy of the Lord. Very good. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do is sing. <laughs> so this will be a first. We're singing on Zoom. Um, you can unmute yourself and sing along. You can mute yourself and sing along. Or you can just follow along. Um, but we're going to sing the joy of the Lord. And I actually have um, an acapella version on YouTube. So there is somebody leading us besides me. <laughs> um, but just um, listen up and sing along. And I also have um, the... I don't know how well that worked, but hopefully it was encouraging. We did get to finally meet together on Sunday, which was wonderful. And um, singing together, that's what probably I missed the most. So that's why I wanted to um, start us off with a song every week, if possible. Okay. All right. So background information. Um, some people love introductions and love background information and others don't. I happen to be one that likes it. And so we're going to go through um, a little bit of Paul's um, life and where Philippians fits into all this and where Philippi fits into all this. And um, some just information about that I think will help us. Um, I think it's always good to know the people that, that the letter was written to and why it was written and what was going on in their lives. And, and then I think it makes it more meaningful for us and more applicable for us. So here is a timeline of Paul's life. Um, and you can see that, um, let's see, well, I don't, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but anyway, um, the second missionary journey is where um, Paul went to Philippi. So second missionary journey right here about 51 um, to 53 AD or CE, whichever you want to call it. Um, and then there is a significant and then his um, his death was around uh, 67, 68 AD. So um, a full decade after he had um, he had a full decade after he um, established the Philippian church before he, before he um, was executed. Um, so let's see here. 
Um, also, he visited um, the church in Philippi or the Macedonian churches um, on his third missionary journey. So he saw them then. And um, he wrote Philippians, of course, it's one of the prison epistles. And so along with Ephesians and Colossians, Philemon, First and Second Timothy and Titus, those were all written when he was imprisoned. Um, there's a little bit of evidence um, that he possibly did a fourth missionary journey um, where he got to see the Philippians again shortly before he was executed. Probably after that or during that missionary journey, he was arrested, tried, and executed. Um, but again, it's just a little bit of evidence. Um, it's 1 Timothy 1.3 talks about how um, Paul had left Timothy in Ephesus so that he could go to Macedonia. And that doesn't really fit with any of the other missionary journeys stories. And so, um, so th that's just, you know, a little bit of evidence there that maybe he did, because he's pretty confident in the book of Philippians that he's going to get to see them again. So possibly just something to think about. Um, the second missionary journey was um, pretty eventful. Um, you, um, and we're going to go into detail, a little more detail of that, but um, it was when um, Paul and Barnabas had the disagreement and um, Paul took off with Silas. Um, he also met Timothy during the second missionary journey and, um, and, then, and then got roadblocks. <laughs> um, he was being led by the Spirit in a negative way. Um, he was being told no, all, all these different directions, he was being told no. But then he got the Macedonian call, and that's what called him to Philippi. And so um, let's continue on here. If anybody has, you know, unmute yourself and talk. Um, if you, you know, anybody has any questions, comments, please feel free. This, we just want to be casual and just learn together. So. Here is a map of his second missionary journey and um, a little bit about Philippi. Philippi has a history, a pretty important city. Um, it was named for Alex the Great's father because Alex the Great, Alexander the Great, sorry, Alexander the Great um, uh -oh. conquered it took over um, Philippi. Everybody still hearing me okay? This is my internet is okay. Um, and so he named it for his father. His father was Philip uh, the, of Macedon and um, probably why Macedonia was named Macedonia also, but um, Alexander the Great conquered that area and, um, and named Philippi after his father. Um, in 360 BC. Um, Philippi was also the site of the decisive battle um, between, um, after the um, assassination of Julius Caesar, um, you had Octavian and Mark Ant Antony on one side and um, Brutus and Cassius on the other side. And they were kind of, you know, trying to vie for power after the assassination of Julius Caesar. And the decisive battle was at Philippi. And, um, of course, Octavian and Mark Antony won. And Octavian became um, Augustus, Emperor Augustus, or Augustus Caesar. Um, so anyway, um, Philippi had a pretty rich history. And because of this great victory um, for the Roman Empire, um, Philippi was granted um, a legal position from Rome that everything that was done in Philippi was the same as if Philippi were on Italian soil, which was a pretty big deal. Um, so they had privilege, um, they had wealth there. Um, they were, um, some put, one put it, um, miniature, a miniature Rome. And um, so they were pagan, <laughs> very much like the Romans, a lot of immorality, a lot of, um, you know, the mythology of all their gods. Um, and 
that is where Paul receives his call um, to go. And it was, it, although Thessalonica was the capital, Philippi was the, um, the important trade route um, through that area. And so it was a pretty big city, um, pretty happening place. So let's take a look at um, Paul in Philippi. And he, let's see here. Um, there were, um, the book is um, full of joy and there were joyful beginnings um, for Paul, even in some trials that he had in Philippi. So in Acts 16, it tells us all about the establishment of the church in Philippi. And it starts with, um, having been told no to go to Asia and having been told no to go somewhere else. Um, Paul has kind of gone to Troas and stopped there and he has a vision and the vision is what we refer to as the Macedonian call. A man from Macedonia come calling, come help us um, because they needed the Lord. They needed um, the salvation that Jesus provided. And so um, he then knew the direction to go. Um, he knew where he was um, going next in this second missionary journey. And so the very first thing, um, they get to the city and they didn't, there was not a synagogue most likely because most of the people in Philippi would have not been Jewish. Um, they would have been Gentiles and um, so, you know, Paul, that was Paul's habit a lot of times, as it was Jesus' habit to go to the synagogue. And so um, it says, so setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace and following and the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in the city some days. So they were there for quite a few days. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside. And that most likely, um, I think a lot of places where there was not a synagogue, where there was not a very big Jewish population, that's where the Jews would gather. They would go outside the city gates and worship. And so that's where he finds um, Lydia and um, some women with her. Um, we went outside the, the gate to the riverside where supposed there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods. So a businesswoman, um, a devout Jew who was a worshiper of God and the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized and her household as well, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And so there was the first church in Philippi, um, in Lydia's house, um, because of her hospitality and her generosity, um, she um, invited them to use her home. And so we have some other eventful things that happens um, in Philippi. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us crying out, these men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. And she was, I mean, she was testifying. <laughs> she was telling the truth. Um, this spirit that was within her um, was recognizing that these men were servants of God Most High and that they were, they were proclaiming and teaching the way of salvation. Um, however, Paul became <laughs> greatly annoyed. Um, and I think that you'll see by the time he wrote to the Philippians, he had changed his mind a little bit on this. Not that you want, um, a, a demon possessed person testifying about Jesus, but Jesus was still being proclaimed and the way of salvation was still being proclaimed. And, um, and Paul writes a little bit about that 
in Philippians. So anyway, um, Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. And so, you know, that was also used as an evidence of his authority, um, that he had command over demons. Um, and I'm sure helped um, further the cause of Christ in Philippi. However, um, her owners or the people that um, were using her, but when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, these men are Jews and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. So again, once, you know, the money was <laughs> um, being put in jeopardy, um, then Paul and Silas are being thrown in prison. Um, and that's what it was. It was more about the money that they were not going to be able to make than it was about anything else. But um, which this, you know, seems like this is a very dark time. Paul is being thrown in prison. But here we see joy again. Um, the crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. This is not a good scene. Um, and when they inf had inflicted many blows upon him, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks. So they weren't just put, you know, in prison a little bit. <laughs> They were thrown on the inner prison. They were put in stocks. They were, had guards around them. Um, this was, again, not a good situation. And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And there's that joy. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped, that he was under order to guard. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for the lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then brought them out and said, sir, what must I do to be saved? Uncommon joy, uncommon compassion. That's what won the Philippian jailer to Christ. Um, he saw in Paul something he probably had never seen in his life. And um, the joy praying and singing um, inside, you know, when you're inside a prison, you know, accused for something that you really didn't even do. Um, uncommon joy and then uncommon compassion we're all here we didn't run we didn't escape um we're all here and they said believe in the lord jesus and you will be saved you and your household and they spoke the word of the lord to him and to all who were in his house and he took them that same hour of the night and washed their wounds and he was baptized at once he and all his family and he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. So here's another whole family um, and servants and I, who else, you know, a lot of people probably that um, were now con converted to the way and became Christians and helped establish this church um, in Philippi. Any comments or questions? Well, not about this section right here, but I was just thinking in um, Philippians at the end of the book where um, Paul tells us how to think. And, you know, uh, this is part of good psychology today where it's, uh, he says, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, 
let your mind dwell on these things. And considering Paul's life and all the struggles he had and being thrown in jail and um, everything, but, you know, I'm sure he tried to practice this himself. You know, not to think about the, um, the humiliation and the, the uh, trouble that he goes through, but I'll just think of the jailer that was, that was converted in his household. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, and that's one of the big themes that we're going to be looking at in Philippians is mentality, attitude, how to think um, to, to show Jesus to others. Um, so, and then that the end here, um, but when it was day, the magistrates sent the police saying, let those men go. So, you know, God had already made a way for them. And the jailer reported these words to Paul saying, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Therefore, come out now and go in peace. But Paul said to them, they have beaten us publicly, uncondemned, men who are Roman citizens and have thrown us into prison. And do they now throw us out secretly? No. Let them come themselves and take us out. And the police reported these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Roman citizens. So they came and apologized to them. Now we see a whole different Thing, look here on those magistrates and policemen and they took them out and asked them to leave the city so they went out of the prison and visited Lydia and when they had seen the brothers they encouraged them and departed so that was Paul's first um, first encounter in with Philippi and the Philippians a lot of exciting things happened <laughs> um, but the church was established um, in this the first European church for Paul um, first time he had crossed into the, the continent of Europe um, and a, a, a get at a very important city, um, a very important place um, for, those, for those times. Okay. So I thought we would look at some of the themes that we're going to be looking over. Um, there, of course, is joy that is throughout the book of Philippians, um, mentality and attitude, as Rena just spoke to, unity, another big theme in the book of Philippians, fellowship, which brings unity, um, another big um, theme, and the gospel is also, and the gospel being preached um, the good news of Jesus is a huge theme in Philippians and the day of Christ. Um, he talks about that with them. And one of the commentaries um, that I was reading talked about the themes um, in Philippians and he kind of summarized them in a way that I think um, I want to share with you. I'm just going to read some from this commentary, but um, the way I think we can remember it really well, because um, he said the, um, the themes, um, they intertwine to make up the letter to the Philippians, all these themes, but the uniting factor in this letter is not any one of them, nor even all of them. Neither a present situation nor a coming event. This letter was not about any of that stuff, which, and we can say this about a lot of, you know, the Bible and Paul's letters and everything else. Um, the the over, un, overriding uniting factor um, is the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, he is fully divine. He is the fully divine Lord um, of one being and equal glory with God. Um, rightful possessor of the divine name, together with the Father, the source of grace and peace and heavenly riches. Um, and then he talks about three different things that Paul also brings out in this letter. Um, to his people, he is the coming one, the Lord of the future. So, and Paul talks about this. He talks about the day of Christ. He talks about Jesus coming back again. Um, he talks about the hope that they need to have because, you know, in Philippi, they were being persecuted. They were under um, a lot of stress and uh, uncertainty and because they were, you know, in, a Ro in the Roman world. And that's just what was, you know, what was going on then. Um, so he, he gives them that hope for the future. 
So again, um, Jesus being Lord of the future, but he's also the Jesus of the past, the Lord of the past. And that's the gospel. That's the gospel message. Um, he was the Lord of the, the cross, of the experience of personal faith by Paul, um, the sovereign gift of God and the gift of righteousness that, that satisfied God's requirements for our salvation. And so he was, he is the Jesus and the Lord of all, all those past um, events. So the, the Lord of the future, the Lord of the past, but he is also likewise, he is the present Lord Jesus Christ. He will come as a transformer, but he is even now transforming for he is the source of the present fruit of righteousness, which Christians would bring forth to his glory. He is their joy. In all circumstances, he gives confidence and security, for he is the Lord of all circumstances, and when proved is found sufficient. This is the richness of Christ, past, present, and future. This is the Jesus who is his people's joy. And I just, you know, I read somewhere else, there's, there's not a good word in the English language for this Greek word joy, um, because we tend to equate joy with, you know, happy, happy go lucky feeling. Um, you know, now as Christians, we know that that's not true, but um, th this joy is, there's such depth to the joy we have in Christ and, and he is our joy. Um, so anyway, so big, big themes in um, the book of Philippians, lots of great stuff to talk about. And we are, we are going to want to leave you. We are actually um, trying to make this class about 30 minutes um, and then give you a little bit of time to chat if you want that time to chat. Um, but again, try to, trying to do more of a devotional type. And every week we want to leave you with um, an encouragement for the week. And so um, the encouragement for the week this week um, is, um, I'm going to start with this in 2 Corinthians. Um, Paul writes about the Macedonian churches, about Philippi. And he says, um, in the midst of a severe trial, their overflowing joy. So in the midst of a very severe trial, and you know, just we're we're in a very severe trial right now, um, and in a lot of different ways. Um, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty, things that you think don't go together, go together, <laughs> and welled up in rich generosity. And Paul was so thankful for them because they were there for him. Um, and, and uh, generosity and prayer and generosity and service and generosity and financial um, help. They were there. Um, and so I love that, that, um, that quote there, that verse there about the Macedonian churches um, and their overflowing joy um, and extreme poverty welled up, it, it resulted in rich generosity. And so, encouragement for the week. I found a nice little quote here. Joy is not the absence of trouble, but the presence of Christ. And that is from William Vanderhaven. And so I challenge you this week to think about where in your life are you hungry for joy? Think about some situations, think about um, things that are going on, circumstances, because we're going to be talking about a lot of different circumstances. And two, what can you do daily to express the joy you've been given so freely in Christ? Um, because of him, there is that rich deepness uh, um, of joy that, that can't compare to anything else. Um, because of the hope we have. Um, anyway, so a couple, a couple things to, um, to challenge you throughout the week. Um, just 
daily think about something that you are joyful about in Christ and um, try to find places in your life where you need more joy and, and put Christ there um, and, and read over Philippians um, a few times. It's only four chapters. You can do it. <laughs> and, um, and, we'll, and we'll be back next week and Lynn will be teaching next week. Um, so if you will all um, pray with me and then we'll chat unless any, oh, does anybody have any comments, questions, concerns? <laughs> All right, let's pray together. Our God and our Father, we are so thankful um, for you, for your majesty, for your, um, for your just great awesomeness, um, for you, for the creator that you are, um, and for the sustainer of our lives that you have become for our, being our Lord, um, being uh, our our savior, you know, giving us salvation. Um, you are just everything Lord. Um, and we're so thankful for the joy that we have in you. Um, we're thankful for, um, our F and K family. We're thankful right now for zoom and for the way that, um, we can be together even when we're not together. Um, and so that's just an incredible blessing in these times, Lord. Um, I thank you for, um, for the ladies that have gotten um, the QBS together um, for this summer. And I just pray that um, you will bless um, our Bible school this summer and that many people will um, be reached through that, that um, the kids will grow um, in their knowledge of you. Um, I thank you for um, our FK family and the way that they've supported us, our ministers, our deacons, our um, elders, and just the way the way they've been there for us through this COVID crisis and through this time of social unrest and just they just keep feeding us Lord and we're so thankful for that um, I ask now that you'll be with those who are hurting with those who um, need your help in a special way you know who they are um, especially tonight we ask that you be with the Ruiz family um, in their loss this week and just comfort them and help us to be a comfort to them um, and just go with us through the rest of the week, Lord. Um, give us joy every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.